Okay. All right. Before we begin, it's that time. That's right. Sponsor mentions everybody. Gooder sunglasses, you guys. That's right. Our friends at Gooder are back. We love Gooder. We love the variety, the quality, the style, and on slip, the gentle bathing of humor in their advertisements, and most of all, their price. So affordable, you can afford to buy more than one and throw them off like a true pro at some fans. It's like 30 bucks just to look really cool for a couple seconds. Use the link at packfiller.com today, and we will have product to hand out to all of our show patrons, as well as I'm going to... I'm going to pony up here something for the Tour de France competition. Next off, Huel. Human Fuel, the affordable, easy, affordable meal option. Nice, affordable. No, affordable, easy, flavorful meal option for the athlete on the go. Try the black edition in multiple flavors as your morning shake or give one of the lunch options such as mac and cheese, curry, or pasta bolognese. Bolognese. Did I say that right? Bolognese. Bolognese. <laughs> The pasta with a little red sauce. You just pour water on it. You, you stir it and you let it sit for about three minutes and you're ready to rock. Get to Huel.com slash pack filler. That is H-U-E-L dot com slash pack filler. They want me to emphasize that by saying it twice today and show them you are a listener that wants great food options. And finally, untapped maple, quick to ingest, quick to digest, quick to fuel, and damn tasty. The only fuel, it's warm in here. The only one fuel, uh, fueled by pure Vermont. Uh, the heat is getting to me. <laughs> <sighs> and multiple flavors. I should slow down. This ain't for your pancakes. It's for your ride. Click the link at packfiller.com. There, I slowed down and I got better. I'm still upset over the whole anchor brewing closing. Mm-hmm. I just, I knew of the beer a long time. And I think my dad had it when I was young, before my dad started drinking absolutely shit beer. But uh, he, and then I remember later in life, I found it. And then the building where Jackson was married this weekend, the restaurant up above, has it on tap. And it's the only place that I've ever seen that has it on tap. And I was like, God, this is really good. I like this. So what does God do? He punishes me and he takes it away. Yep. Oh, God. Just when you thought things were going to fall into proper proper formulaic Tour de France results, the entire event flips. On top of that, in breaking news, the last single member of the pack filler is now officially off the market. Sorry, ladies. Jackson's wow, gone. Right? Yeah, we're all chained down saying, yes, dear, whatever you want. Because, you know, they, we get into those show moments where it's like, no, my wife, but I got to check with my wife first. And everybody's like, oh, you always got to make it look like you're so chained to your wife. It's like, no, it's common courtesy, you dipshit. Oh, welcome to Life on Two Wheels. Welcome to the Pack Filler Cycling Podcast. I'm Pat Bulger. We're still a couple of men down, but just like Sudol Quickstep, we will soldier on, hoping the magic to continue or at least begin. There's always next week. Yeah. <laughs> If you're watching live on YouTube, uh, we are live every show. In fact, we're the only one who is consistently live, I think. I don't know a whole lot of cycling podcasts that do that, and they unedit. Well, we unedit, hence I said that. I did that on purpose. Um, <laughs> to you prove are, it. Yeah, exactly. So if you're watching live, you already know who's here. If you're listening after the live stream, well, then this is for you. And I took the entire theme song to get through the intro, which means I am off my game. Must mean I'm 54 tomorrow. Gentlemen, oh, that's what? right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The thirteenth. Oh, last we're day. tearing down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're drinking nanny because right, I'm getting ready for tomorrow. Oh, gentlemen, please respond to the following icebreaker que- icebreaker question: Have you ever seen a ghost, and if so, where? Or even more so, do you believe in ghosts? And let's make that a three part <gasps> question. Sam's staring off into the abyss, which means he's looking at one right now. <sighs> The voices in your head won't stop screaming. Yeah. By the way, my wife and I were downtown yesterday, and why do all the the methed out guys and girls, when they're talking to voices in their head, why are they always angry at the voices? Why aren't there any friendly voices in the meth head? Yeah, I would a, say it's kind Paul, of like your us neighbors. with, with yeah. like <laughs> jerk drivers, right? We don't just like have a friendly conversation with them anymore. We just yell at them because we're just sick of them. I wave at all the mini drivers. Yeah. Everybody who drives a Mini Cooper, I wave back. Yeah. But you, like if somebody is being a jerk on the road, you're not like, hey, have a nice day. Oh. Like this guy over here is like, I am sorry. I, I messed up back there. Let me apologize for this. You know, goes up and 
Pat's back there cursing this guy out, even though <laughs> <laughs> it was my fault. I know. And Paul's up there apologizing, yeah. and Pat's just screw you. <laughs> And I was going to emphasize the fact that I'm the super nice guy. But yeah, right. You know, thanks for that, That's Sam. not. You really kind of put me in my place there. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, so anyway, back to introductions. I, I cause The meth people are always just like, fuck out. That is, you now, son of a bitch. You never let me. Blah, blah, blah. Be, being a seasoned downtown person. Yeah. I can tell you. It's been what? Those are the people. Weeks? When some You see meth, meth people who some of them are in this fancy dance. Just kind of mm-hmm. go around them. If they're angry. Get on the other side of the road. Oh, yeah. They, they're looking for something. But, and then, you know, I, I see more down there of people with fentanyl that they're all gorked out than I see meth heads anymore. Mm-hmm. So they're just like, just really? down. Yeah, fentanyl yeah. just knock you out? Yeah, it's a, like a synthetic opiate. It's like, okay. yeah. I really don't know any of these things. Mm-hmm. I'm really. Well, really you got to move downtown to get to know all your drugs. <laughs> <laughs> That's fentanyl. Oh, he's just high on pot. And this guy over here, he's a drunk. <laughs> you could snort my sidewalk. First of all, he's eyeing a district champion's jersey this weekend. Uh, Mr. I, well, Paul Maine. I still have to win it. You're I mean, eyeing it is all I'm saying. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No pressure. Yeah. No pressure. pressure at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm real, I, I feel like I'm invested in you winning because I want that beer to be opened. Yeah. Oh, I don't really care about it. I've got a magnum of St. Bernard's EBT 12. (laughs) Yeah. Big. Uh, Ghost ghost Adventures, Ghost Hunters, Ghost. Me personally, no. But I'll. And we had this discussion with your relative at the wedding, uh, Ben. Yeah. Because Haunt is supposedly where that wedding was. There was semi haunted in. And so back in my electrician days, I was working down at Tico, and then Tico has this theater that they got a bunch of grants to open up, and it's kind of a Art Deco, kind of like in downtown Spokane, the Fox Theater, very unique yeah. style. And so I went and worked on this doctor's house, and the other journeyman, <clears throat> he's a great guy, funny guy, his name was Brent, um, worked at the theater. And I came by after I was done to pick him up. And he goes, I'm not going back there. And I go, what are you I'm, talking I'm about? Going back there. There's something something really weird about that place. And I go, what are you talking about? He goes, first of all, there hasn't been power for, for over a decade in this place. So he was doing electrical cleanup so they could fire this thing off, you okay. know, heat it all up. And he said, I kept feeling like somebody's present there. And he's not one of those people. He's not. And he's like, I kept turning around. It's like, no, no one's there. And he goes, and I thought, that's, I'll just work away. And he had this little headlight, and he's working. And he says, the backside <sighs> of his body yeah. just got, like, ice cold. And he turned around, and he thought he saw something move. And then he's like, no, 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 this is not, this is not real. And he says, he kept working, and his feet felt like they caught on fire. They're hot. He goes, all right. The only thing I could think of is start singing. Jesus loves me this I know <laughs> so of course he's telling this story and I'm laughing well <clears throat> History Channel used to be, this is like I said oh man I bet you this was probably 15 years ago and uh, and so the History Channel had most haunted places in the United States and I'm watching it like oh yeah what, whatever and Tico Washington Theater was one of them really yeah. shut up yeah wow. it is a haunted place and so there's there a go. ghost story. So okay. So you're a believer? I think so because okay. I trust this guy. I've worked right. with him for 20 years. Yeah. yeah. He and that's the only time he's ever experienced something like that. Wow. So. Next off, he's eyeing a 90 plus mile road race this weekend in 90 plus degree heat, Mister <laughs> Sam Leipold. <laughs> Man, when the temperature <laughs> is higher than the miles, you know yeah. you're in trouble. Yeah, when you're talking 90s, one. it's going to be a hot one. Um. How's yeah. You? That's that's gonna be brutal. But I, uh, man, I, I have a couple, and it's all around one house. We used to, my wife and I used to house it. So it was this place down in uh, Rockwood area, right? Old homes. These are like late eighteen hundreds, yeah. where they have like a you know servant hallways and like quarters and stuff. Never, I mean, like ugh, I hated going there, and we usually would be doubled up at that point. So we'd have two houses we were house sitting, and my wife's always like, "Yeah, you got that one." I'll go out in the country, right? Like I'm going to go somewhere where <laughs> just far away from that house. Yeah. So anyway, I'm I'm there alone, and one time I'm in the shower, and all of a sudden I hear this screaming, and I'm just like, like 
butt ass naked in the shower and I like turn the water off and I'm like <laughs> I'm like it was the pipes it was the pipes it was the pipes and it's cool and I just like similar story to like singing right I'm like it's okay everything is fine <laughs> Jesus loves me Jesus loves me <laughs> so that happened and then you know like that day I come back later and there was this long corridor that you'd walk into the kitchen right from that kitchen, you couldn't see this grand staircase, but like it was right on the other side of the wall. I'm standing and walk down this long hall. I do it as quickly as I can because it's dark and scary. And I get into the kitchen and I hear steps coming down the, you know, hall. And I'm like, I'm going to see a ghost. <laughs> and I'm just standing there in terror. Like part of me is like, run, Sam. The other part's like, you need to see it. <laughs> 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 so then this you hear down to the bottom and it stops and I'm like Israel turns <laughs> starts to walk into the kitchen and I am loaded with a scream at this point right and this tiny little cleaning lady walks around the corner <laughs> and I'm just <laughs> <laughs> and she looks at me like and I am like I'm so sorry are you real <laughs> I'm no. just so expecting I, I was like so preloaded to know that that was a ghost coming around the corner and it obviously wasn't but like that screaming in the shower noise and many of the other noises yeah. that happened in that house was just like too much too much so you're believing it I'm yeah I'm gonna okay. say that I don't want to test the waters alright alright me, I'm the guy who couldn't be more meh. Because I am that way these days, especially in terms of my racing, and I'll talk about that here shortly. I'm Pat Bulger, and I actually, in all of the things I do for a living, um, theaters and stuff like that, I have never actually had a ghost type experience. Which you never had that say, feeling of like somebody's watching you. No. And- no, I haven't, which is weird wow. because, yeah. You seem like someone who'd be paranoid. No. <laughs> oh, my ghost thinks. But no, I have, I've never actually seen a ghost per se, but I did have a moment in my car once where I was um I was I, I pulled out of this gas station and I I had just filled up gas and my my sister who had just passed probably within the last year. Um, I was heading towards this intersection and in my head, I'm pretty sure it was in my head, I hear this screaming Put your seatbelt on. Put your seatbelt on right now. I mean, my sister used to nag at me like that Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And she was just screaming it. And I'm like, fine. I take my foot off the gas to grab my seatbelt. And a car blew through the intersection in front of me. Missed me by millimeters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but missed me by millimeters. That's on. Well, there we go. Looks like we're alive. Missed me. Missed me that close. Yeah, so yeah. that was that was that was a little freaky. So anyway, back to a pack filler cycling podcast. Oh yeah, yeah. That took us a long time to yeah. get to there because we've had live problems. I'm explaining this to the people who are listening later and wondering why there might be an edit on a podcast I say that's actually not edited. <laughs> Hypocrisy. Before we get to the tour and topic, we need to take a short moment and congratulate Jackson on his marriage to his now wife, Maria Sawinski Bulger. Yeah, right. Yep, 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 absolutely. I have an applause. And I think we should toast. And I I have a beer that he gave me for right here. Here Heroic action. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, you're drinking his beer. He knows you well. That was the wrong music, but but it still gave the thing. I got the goat beer. The goat beer. Greatest of all time. You did, didn't you? Oh, wow. Um... So, uh, congratulations. Everything was perfect. It was a cool wedding. And um, I'm sure that there will be some social media f- pictures posted. But I don't know if we'll post one pack or not. doesn't have anything to do with cycling. But neither does this show. It's <laughs> <laughs> a pay off the last 20 minutes. Yeah, Sam. And I can't believe you freaking rode the next day. Yeah, I had to. And I felt like, you guys, I danced so hard. <laughs> I, I didn't leave the dance floor. And in, in, we have some really good video. <laughs> And it's like I look at myself and it's just this like ex- exhausted like corpse at the end. Like I refuse <laughs> to sit down, and I am just like caving you didn't over. Get the, 
No. You didn't get the tap on no. the shoulder no. from the yeah. from the dance. I had teacher. my own bottle. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but like, yeah, it was it was killer. And then I was like, well, I got to go spin this off. Yeah. So David and I rode the next day. I and I didn't ride. I I wish both of my wife and I wish we would have been able to make it to the dance. But I was <laughs> struggling the whole day trying to stay awake. I, it was I a long day. Your afternoon nap, Gramps. Yeah. Well, I know. I'm at that <laughs> age. But, I mean, remember, I kept saying, dude, we need to get some coffee in me. Oh, no. I yeah. had a dopio, and it's just like, boop, boom. It just went back down. <laughs> and while I'm eating, I'm yawning. Renee's like, yeah, shut your mouth when you're chewing. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> I, I, mean, I don't know what was wrong with I me. made it the whole night, and um, at the end of the night, I was carrying a whole bunch of stuff out of the out of the wedding venue, and I, I apparently lost the ability to walk down <laughs> two steps. <laughs> well, if you were carrying them up to the parking lot, that's a lot of steps. No, to get there. I went through the building, okay. and then I came down two steps, and I don't know Uh-oh. if you can see Uh-oh. the bruise anymore. No. I, I, the remainder of the bruise on my knee. Mm. Yeah, I landed on it. Yeah, well, it's green now. I just it saw is green. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was. I wasn't. Well, it might have been. Uh, how are you guys <laughs> feeling about our district championships this weekend? Who's feeling confident? Who's feeling oh shit? Who's feeling good? Who's feeling bad? Well, it's not a district championship for him. No, it's not. So, Sam, how are you just feeling about a regular old bike race this weekend? Yeah, I'm, you know, like, part of me is thinking, uh, like, here have, he I, comes. have I learned my lesson in talking shit before a race? Mm-hmm. Like, because, you know, the number of people now that I've heard being like, you know, because I'm the first one to roll up to a start line and be like, I'm going to destroy you and destroy you and destroy yeah, yeah, you. Yeah. So where I'm going with this is like, it'll be fun. So you're still going to do it? I'm still doing it, 100%. Okay. I hope to God that there's neutral water and or Paul's out there giving me feeds. because I will. I'll stick up. Yeah, I will die otherwise. Yeah. Like, there's going to be no way. And I think I can be a contender. Like, I, I mean, I've put in the miles. Like, I could have been I've, a contender. Yeah, exactly. could have been somebody. Yeah. But it's like, I am, it'll be curious to see. I haven't really actually looked, like, what fields I'm racing against. But it's interesting because it's like, well, yeah, I do want to win whoever starts that race but also on the same note it's like there's like gonna be a lot of like cat threes or something that are not in my category yeah so like do i follow their wheel yeah abs- yeah yeah you you, you want to win the whole thing if you can that's why i mean that's uh-huh. why yeah i'm yeah. like well even though you're not in my category i'm kind of ready to die to beat all of you mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what it should be all right mm-hmm. such logical <laughs> yeah Who's that's bike racing tactic? that's bike racing <laughs> holy shit yeah so that's that's how i feel <clears throat> paul yeah, I'm excited about it. I mean, uh, that's why I ride my bike. Yeah. And I would, you know, I went out for a ride uh, Sunday, and it was, was it Sunday? Oh, I can't remember. It was like a <laughs> Grandpa. hundred and, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, God. <laughs> yeah, it was 105, like, that was a recording out on the road. I just rode oh. an exposed area. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was beaten heat, and uh I, I usually do really well, and I came back and I said to my wife, I said, you know, I am getting older because that I thrived on that, and I was struggling. I was really struggling to lay down the power, but you know, I was tired that night before anyway. So when... <laughs> God, he's so old. I am. Dude, stop it! So so you're you're going to be this way someday. Too. We're going to do a dementia test on you. I already you told you. Yeah. I'm, this is a part of aging. I don't mind the memory thing. It's the skin thing. <laughs> I have no there epidural system. It's just a shroud. It just like drops just this old. flesh-looking thing, and it just kind of hangs off my bones. There. It's yeah. like the nylon sacks they put behind their necks in the Tour de France. Yeah, yeah. Just a yeah. bag of ice barely yeah. holding on. Yeah. Okay. Well, and for an example, I cut my thumb. I was sitting there working, doing installing a fixture. I was drilling out the mounting plate as a disc, yeah. and I was drilling out for a hole, and it's the bit caught, and it went... Whoosh, and my paper thin skin just goes flop. <laughs> and I think I severed my uh, tendon in my thumb. I can't straighten it out. Oh my I can God. bend it down, but I can't straighten it out. Shut your beautiful no, mouth. Are no, you no, kidding me no, right that's now? Just, I'm trying to pull it back. So that's getting old. Okay, that's a problem. No, it is. We'll touch on that later. 
I th- th- just in case we want to go back to bike racing. Oh they, yeah, it right. is a time trial and a road race on Saturday and a Criterium on Sunday. I'm excited for the crit. The road race is the only district championships in in the entire thing. So it's like, you know for masters for masters yeah mm-hmm. for masters. Um, and um, I'm going to confess openly right now. You may not show up. No, I have to show up to the mm. crit for sure. I have to show up for the crit for sure. I'm announcing the crit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have been, if I announce the crit, they'll let me race my race if I want. Um, and <laughs> and the the time trial, we scouted Mm-mm. out the time trial course, and there's no way I'm riding the time trial. No way in hell. Um, the road race, the night before the road race, I am going to a concert with my wife because we had tickets for it last year. And it's her favorite band in the whole wide world. And so we're going to a concert that night. And I know it's going to be a lot of time on your feet and things like that. Am I looking for an excuse? Perchance, maybe. <laughs> but like the other reality is you just like close the blinds and sleep in till 10 because your race doesn't start till. Well, noon that's where I wanted one. to come in. And, and not only, I, I have to be there to see yeah. how Paul does because that's the ultimate, you know, thing. Yikes. Yikes. No pressure. Yeah. And then you need fed. Mm-hmm. And there's you. Apparently, your wife doesn't give a flying she, well, shit she's in about Canada you. Doing oh, some, like marathon. Thing. Didn't don't most well, people some marathon thing? Don't most yeah. people who yeah, say this is how tied into each other's <laughs> lives we in, are in high school when you were a really big dork and people don't have girlfriends? Don't yeah. they say that they're the girlfriends yeah, in, in Canada? Canada. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just checking. She's real. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if if you do need fed, I I'm I'm more than willing to do that. That would be awesome, and that would probably take me out of the bike race. So that's oh. why he was volunteering for that. I yeah. Well, I would because I'm just the more I'm thinking about it, my my fitness is slowly starting to come back. But as I told you guys the other day, getting anything above 160 beats a minute, my it's like my plateau. Even though it's mine. Well, but I'm <laughs> but usually I usually have ten to fifteen more beats on top of that, and that's a that's a good dose of of power mm-hmm. when you're when you're losing that. So, so I I mean I think I just need I I just need more training. You, know, you can get some good get footage things. for you know of yeah. like feeds and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, so Very I'll cool. probably just kind of go out and do that, and then put the crit and just see what happens. You know, if I'm out there and you know if you got a big old if you're out there feeding him, yeah. For it's say eighty eight miles, right? Yeah. So you're gonna be out there for about four hours. Yeah. In ninety eight degree heat. I think that's worse off than standing on your feet. <laughs> <and laughs> this is true. Concert. This is true. But the worst case scenario is is I don't race the crit crit and I don't really care. Mm. Gotcha. Mm. So that's where I am. Did I David mean, sign know, up for the crit? He didn't. Huh. He hadn't signed up for anything yet. So there we go. Um, let's check in on a little... Oh, do I have it? I believe I do. Let's check in for a little trip around France, shall we? That's so There's great. a little gig going on around France. Ho <laughs> <laughs> ho! I forgot to do that last week. I forgot I downloaded that. <laughs> yeah, so a um, little trip around Wine and Cheese Land, also known as the Tour de France. If you're listening to this podcast, pretty good chance you're up to speed on the results so we don't necessarily need to delve too far into the news of the headlines. But So let's open it up to discussion here and go straight to it. We are almost halfway, right? Would tomorrow Tomorrow's be halfway? 12, so yeah, it, tomorrow yeah. be halfway. Yep. Yeah, so there we go. Uh, talk to me about surprises. Anything that sticks out that you guys want to mention before I start answer, asking my random questions uh, that aren't random. Uh, questions about the race. Anything that you guys think is just like, holy shit, big surprises that happen to have happened over the last Jasper 11 stages. Disaster. Be- that, Jasper that guy. the Master. No, his Disaster was his In room the name. Netflix series. Because he's always yeah, forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. saying they're calling him that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, his dominance is like four stages. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually curious, like touching on that, is that like... Fabio was you know, complaining and a couple other writers about his like swerving in the road and stuff. And I honestly, I haven't looked back through the tapes, but it would be curious to look and see like how much he is like swinging across because there was that one with Wout that I'm like, no, that was just the straight line. Like, yeah, that's. But yeah. like the lead up to it and all the positioning, you know, it's like Matthew Vanderpool like pushing. Uh, <laughs> who was it that he Gamai. pushed? Yeah, Gamai yeah. out of the way to get through there. It's like. 
Why is that legal? Are we at the point where it's just the drama is increasing? I mean, is this yeah, a maybe. point of the fact that the pressure is so high? Yeah. You know, especially if you've got a suit all quick step kit on. Totally. Um, they're walking around with a big donut hole right now. Mm-hmm. And Sudal's like going, Well, they, they banked a lot on Fabio um, yeah. Jakobsen and that crash on that, that, that track sprint. Was 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 like there was chaos. butter all yeah. over the track apparently. Well, yeah. the, the thing is, is <laughs> like somebody pointed out, and I can't remember if it was Adam Blythe or somebody said, the problem is when no, it was Mitch um, Docker. When you do it on a track, if it's on the road, you have a tendency the speeds are going up, and everybody's kind of mm-hmm. in the line. On a track, you have so much room. You have six across, and people are trying to, you know, move over, and that's where all. The, if you look, it's always right in the middle of a corner or coming out of a corner and that's when those crashes were happening um so that's and we race on the track and that's what we even talked Mm -hmm. you know our talk like how on god's green earth do we crash on this stuff yeah and that's what happens happens. if you think about it that's with jackson Mm -hmm. we're yeah we're we're all all, condensed there yeah condensed and wide across the road so I will. It, it's it just blows me away that we're talking about the fact that crash is occurring because you have too much roadway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's just lunacy. Well, yeah, right? I know because like it's it, it's a funnel in a lot of those sprints, right? Like you, those guys are all in to try to get to the narrow part of the road yeah. where it's like twisting and turning, and then there's only like three hundred meters to all out sprint. But if you have that much wide track, you got everybody is still jostling for the position. Yeah, you can always come around the guy. That you're in front of, and then it just gets wider and wider, and they're coming around you, and then this guy wants to move over. It's, it becomes chaos. There are discussions about Fabio Jakobsen potentially not making it to Paris, yeah. like mm-hmm. he's having that bad a time. Mm-hmm. Like today, he was completely out of out of commission. He was nowhere near the front, mm-hmm. and if if the writing's on the wall there, she's think of what's being put in the lap of Julian Alaphilippe and and like Kaspar Askren. Mm-hmm. Holy crap! Yeah. Michael Morcott was going to have to become an attack specialist or right? the, the, something their sprinter. Like overnight. Yeah, yeah. Or their, yeah, or their sprinter. It's just unbelievable what they're going to have to do. Uh, so how about Cavendish's departure from almost to not at all? Um, obviously a, a heartbreaker for a lot of people rooting for Cav. I don't know about you guys. When he got that second, I was screaming at the TV. I was screaming at the TV. Yeah. And it sounded like it was a misshift of some sort. Mm-hmm. So yeah, couldn't get go- into his 11? No, it, yeah. it popped in and then it popped back to the 12. Yeah. If you look at it like the straight on shot, you can see he makes a jump and his back wheel jumps up off the ground. You, he gets out of the saddle, he shifts, and then he Chunk. he gets back down on the saddle, shifts on 11, jumps out of the saddle, and then it pops back. So he's up and out of the saddle. And that's when he actually, he was in the 11 and he's pulling away and then it went back to the 12 and that's when Philipson screen by him so it's uh-huh. one of those things like like uh um this knucklehead to my right here yeah uh, sam yeah yeah we were talking about it his like, name's i've never yeah. we'll just I've have to remind never him. seen so many mechanicals in the last couple of years That's i have to question what i was gonna say too. this this is like the world's best mechanics in the world absolutely and they're having problems keeping chains on uh, you know these kind Today of electronic stuff. Yeah, yeah, it, it like, is chronic, and I and I have to wonder we're going crazy with twelve speeds because the tolerance all it takes is just a you know like a millimeter, two millimeters off, and that totally. thing's going to go pew, shoot right off. So and when you're got with these guys throwing down, you know, eighteen hundred watts yeah. or right. something like that. You yeah, know, that this, millimeter mid yeah, shift. Big. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I was like, I'm surprised by the amount of mechanicals, like chains dropping and or, um, you know, people like can't shift. And so they just like have to get out and just throw them a new bike. Um, I mean, that happened today with like the RKS Samsung guy. And then, uh, yeah, I'm also, I think the other thing I'm surprised with is just Wout. Like Wout, you know, it was like he was in a pretty good position and then he just got swallowed up today. It's like. You know, yeah. he was just, he couldn't even sprint because he's just in the middle. You just see him kind of sit up. And it's it, like. Do you think this is, with Wout's situation, is this a tactical decision by the team to, to can, kind of keep him under reins? Or um, or is he just not at the level he was last year? I, uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think that he is at the same level. I just think that it's like he is doing 
major roles in some of the like you know more all-arounder stages like you know when he was way up the road and then had to go up mountains with climbers sure like i think like that is just taking it out of him but yeah i I do think like he's he's not wanting to push it for some of those sprints you know he he doesn't really want to contest them because if he did crash out like that would be a huge loss yeah yeah so it's it's almost like if he doesn't have a clear shot at it he's not going to even go for it Exactly. I, I I'm not bashing Wout in this in any way, shape, or form. But I love Wout. I yeah, do me too. too. Wout for president. I do too. Yeah. But Wout for president. But it's so funny that the, that there was so much uproar in the Unchained series about his his almost selfish driven mm-hmm. uh, demeanor, and then you see things like yesterday where just out of nowhere he's in the break and then he get caught, and then he's in another little break with M- Matthew Vanderpool, which is kind of the most bizarre thing I've seen the entire tour so far. It's like, why are you guys trying to close a two minute gap? You're not going to be able to close two minute gap mm-hmm. anyway all these things and then he's just kind of he's like your brother he's like david he's just going well i'm gonna go here like somebody needs a leash to go whoa big fella yeah come on back and and so part of me i don't think the unchained documentary creators tried to make a villain out of wild van Ert. But I think they are showing the fact that this guy is hard to rein in to an extent because he has such such power, such strength, such such it, an it, engine. It, yeah, such an engine that he's just like, I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm gonna go. Let me off the. I'll get it. I'll get him. I'll get him. I'll get him. You know, or something like that. He's like, yeah, a, I mean, in the like video, yeah, in the video, he talks about how much he loves to hurt. Yeah, it's like that's David. Well, you have yeah. to. You have to <laughs> think. David's like, I'm not done yet. Yeah. He's like trying to pick up his arm for another swing, and it's like, no, you're, you're done, child. Sit down. Yeah. Kind of you know? like you're yeah. dancing the other night. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like they put a fitness challenge. <laughs> I'm not leaving the fucking dance floor until you do. <laughs> that was, I'm not that was us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving either. <laughs> Wait, Sweet Caroline by Neil Diamond. This song's really overused. Yeah. I'm staying. I'm <laughs> staying. <laughs> well, I think with what I'm wondering if he's he's free to fly if he gets in the break, so he tries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then same with your sprints, but you can't. I mean, he's shut down. I've seen him shut down three times now mm-hmm. in the sprint. He, he's boxed in, or it gets tight. He's not taking a chance, and he's got a baby on the way. Yeah, so you know he's not yeah. gonna. And rumors were rampant that he was going to. Abandon yeah, the he tour. doesn't know where that. And he's came like, from. no, yeah, yeah. Skimmel had to actually yeah, apologize yeah. to him, I guess, about um, the fact that you heard what Rob said. Maybe he wants me out of the race or yeah. something. I don't know. <laughs> oh. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. There's plenty of racing to. I mean. He could be a huge key factor in the, yeah. in the next, you know, week and a half. So the second half. Speaking mm-hmm. of rumors, there are rumors out there saying that potential uh, a, a potential sale of Team Sudal Quickstep, um, and Patrick Lefevre is running around rampant, denying it and denying it, almost like he's an American, uh, you know, political personality. Um, and and he's 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 denying it left and right, and and rumors are simply is because he wants to keep Remco Evenepoel from being sold away. If the teams, if the rumors are that the teams being, you know, sold, and and so that's that's an interesting. I love the I love the I rest. What they rumors. mean by that? I mean he's, I mean he's the. Would it, would Lefevre have sold his own team? Is he the primary owner of the team? Would he have sold his own team? So I don't know. It's it's. I mean, it's he's the bank. He's got yeah. I I, I don't really understand that. But yeah. Maybe he. That's what it is. It's like there's somebody above him. But yeah. As far as I know, he writes the checks. Yeah. So who's had a better season so far, Sudal Quickstep or Lotto? Lotto. Yeah. And you they just so? picked up another sponsor. Really. BMW. Hello. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Wow. But just for cars. So I don't, I don't know if they get any money. Oh. But that probably helps. Yeah. around cut some cut some cost yeah. yeah the little track is uh it's growing on me Lidl. you're liking the kit more little track i yeah. don't like it kid i'm not i'm not it's hating gr- it it's 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 the colors i don't mind the print i mean the design but i don't like those mash of colors oh yeah i mean but i don't know all the other cool thing is and this goes to track is like all of the bikes are different they're cool mm. yeah. paint schemes yeah whoever's in charge of the color the paint yeah pop, yeah should should be rewarded for yes. the company. They I always are, have. I don't know. Track track bikes have always looked pretty damn cool. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Yep. They've always looked pretty cool. They're just very proprietary and I would never want to own one. But <laughs> sponsor me, Chuck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how about how about the G C did anybody think it was over when Tade lost time on that on that no. first big oh, attack? God, no. Really? No. No, no yeah. way. 
part of me was like, ah, oh, shit. He's it. still coming back. Like, he's going to peak he's final still gonna week. Win. He's peaking yeah. final week. You think he's still going to win? Oh, sure. yeah. yeah. He's still building. The guy is like, I mean, yeah, Jonas he's, is in for it. Somebody pointed out in one of the thousands of cycling podcasts I listened to, but they were like, the best team, without a doubt, in the in the tour is Jumbo v- Visma. The best rider is, without a doubt, Tade. Tade Pagacho. But totally. the thing is, is, that's what the battle is between the best team against this unbelievable guy. And mm-hmm. right now, it's it's still level. And for somebody who is missing the bike, I saw a training uh, video of him because he couldn't ride. He had a backpack with a couple of plates in it running up, like, worse than the Perry Stairs. Just... <laughs> And that guy, it, it, he just, he's an amazing human being. I, I was thinking recently, because I watched the Team Sky thing on GCN and Super Teams. Yeah. And uh, it was it was interesting to think about how, like, Chris Froome, so villainized, and, and a lot of, you know, they took away the romance of cycling, right? They just really dialed in the potential. Like, Chris Froome is an incredible athlete. I'm not denying that. But, like, Todd, it would have smoked him. Mm-hmm. If Tade was racing Chris yep. Froome on on Sky at the time, Tade would have won. See, because Tade would have so just sat hesitant. on the. I'm so hesitant to do that because the, the the tactics of cycling have changed so much over every generation. Yeah, because you're looking at would would Eddie at, beat Bernardi? No, would no. Bernardi no beat Miguel Indurain? Would Miguel Indurain beat Greg Lemond? Would Greg Lemond beat nobody? Would beat What's it? Well, no. Um, who's who's Mister Fifty Three Percent? Oh, Bianchi Reese. Bianchi Reese. Nobody yeah. beat him. Mister Sixty. Dope to the yeah. gills. Yeah. Um, but you know, it, comparing and contrasting tactics and, and but like styles, if you look at the speed that you know, like they go at, it's like I mean, Ineos just can't keep up with it anymore. It's like they still they like they cannot set that level of a pace anymore. But that's but, not the same team. Well, here's here's the thing. Anytime somebody, well, even Jumbo Visma, the first first year that Tati won, and the second year, they tried to do the the, the, the Enios, and they were blowing everybody out. There was only one Tade person. Tati was just like waiting yeah. till it's down to That's mano a, mano and says, yeah. "See ya." Yeah, Tati, that that pace works so well for him. That's what he needs. That's what yeah. he needs. He's That's so explosive. Like, it's it, he's it's incredible. I'm mm-hmm. just. Tade fanboy. So what is the tactic for Yumbo and and UAE over these next, you know, four, 13 days? Yumbo, get him isolated mm-hmm. early in a stage. Yeah. Like, blow out his teammates early in a stage and, and then start. That. Yep, And that yeah. was success. And it was success. Mm-hmm. And UAE, I would say, don't get your nose in the wind. <laughs> like, <laughs> let Yumbo do everything. Yeah, the hardest part for them, UAE, is when... You know they were doing a yeah. protective role, yeah, and that they just can't handle it. They, no, they they're they're strong that. riders without a doubt, but I think yeah, Jumbo Visma has has it dialed in. But even that uh, going up the Pudawi, I mean Puda Dome, yeah, 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 yeah. Going up that 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 was just a brutal climb, and and it was <laughs> mano a mano, you yeah. know. So um, Tade just launched. I mean that explosiveness and. That's not uh, Benigo's style. He has we're, to ride. We're potentially looking at the one time trial, 22K, with a 17-second gap between these first these top two riders. It's going to be this time trial. This mm-hmm. time trial could have a huge implication upon the race. Oh, yeah. I, I think it's because it's short enough. I think that we're only thinking uh, – I'm only thinking a few seconds. Yeah, I think the like stage 15, 17, those with multiple climbs and stuff. There's that's where, you know, attrition comes into play, mm-hmm. and that's where no they have to grind him or... down. They have to grind. Um, Yumbo Visma has to grind down, uh, Tade like mm-hmm. they did last in stage eleven last year. Mm-hmm. But as long as that's there's no the mechanical or anything like that yeah, for mechanics. either rider, because if something like that happens, you're screwed. You know that other rider. Like, yeah, I think that if it's a perfect day, that the riders will be very close. But I think that if it is not a perfect day for one rider, they are going to hemorrhage time, mm-hmm. and that would be the race. And it almost seems like Jonas Vingegaard. I'm not going to say Vingegaard. I'm not from that country. I'm not going to adapt. I'm not going to say Tour de France, even though I do. 
I say to our friends. I'm hypocritical yeah. across the board. I pick my names and I pick my things. And you live in Spokane? Going, Spokane, Washington. Mm, Washington. Uh, yeah, and I, I don't eat French fries. I eat freedom fries. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I don't know why. I'm just like, oh, I'm sticking with Vin Gugard. Um, but that he peaked just about the tail end of the Dauphiné. And maybe there is a hopefully not downward slide approaching. You think he? You think Vingigo, Vingigard? I'm gonna just oh, yeah, do it both ways. I'm gonna That's just nice. do it both ways. This is yeah, whatever feels good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. <laughs> I do think that, yeah, yeah. like like I was saying earlier, I think that Tade is on the rise and Vingigard is on the the yeah. drop. So you think he peaked early? At, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, and he's, he's I, I, yeah. Decline. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I think that he's we're he speculating is, like crazy. You yeah, know, I think he know. is in his peak right now. And I think that Tata is just going to get faster over the next week. Yeah. There was that one day, though. And if Tade has another day like that one day where he lost a minute, mm-hmm. that's a t- I mean, it's taken him five stages to climb back from it. And you think but, about it, the both times that he's lost last year and this year is when he got isolated early. That was what I was yeah. saying. That's... That's and, where he gets into p- trouble. So. And that was a day where y- UAE spent a lot of time on the front. Yeah. Don't get your nose in the front. Yeah. Like, you know, if, if UAE can just sit back, then he's not going to be isolated and he'll be fine. Okay. There we go. Um, any other th- any other riders that could surprise? For a while there, about before our la- after our last show, we were like, oh, Jahili yeah, could yeah. do something. And he did. And then, well, he did, but and then, then he just exploded the next day. Mm-hmm. Uh, Peo Bilbao. Bilbao um, had a great stage today. Mm-hmm. No, yesterday. Fifth climbed him, fourth, climbed fourth. himself into the top 10. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Fifth. He's fifth or fourth. Yeah, yeah. Um, I asked. This it's going to be a really good battle for a third, fourth, fifth. So it's mm-hmm. it's a but first and second. Tade Jonas show. That's it. One hundred percent. But like I think that that's. I had somebody that came into the clinic today that is you know just a mountain bike rider, and they were saying how whoa it is like crazy tactics going on. They're brand new to the, watching the tour, and they're like, "There's all these little pieces working together." And like, yeah, and this year in particular, mm-hmm. like this year is phenomenal. Yeah. Like you have so many races going on in one. I mean, Nielsen, right? Like I don't think that it, that's going to be an interesting, you know, fought jersey as we get you know yeah. into the Alps. I think that it's going to be hard for him to keep that. But then also, um, like it's crazy how the green jersey's just gone. That's done. It's that race over. is over. Yeah. So was it last year too? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By yeah. this time, Wild had it locked. Yeah. I okay. Here's a question I wanted to ask: Is in regards to the tour, like it seems like you know, yellow is always they that is so calculated for three years in advance. But <laughs> for the other ones, do you think that it's just like the first few stages and they're like, oh, I got a lot of these points. Let's see what happens. Or do you think Nielsen has been targeting the polka dots? I don't. That's a great question. The green jersey for sure, but I mean, I think even last year the green jersey for a while was like he just kind of found himself in it. And he goes, "Oh, I guess I'll sprint for more of these points." Mm-hmm. No, he he his intentions. He announced that he was going for the okay. green jersey last year. But this is year the polka he says dots it's just not. a random jersey. I think a lot of them are hoping that because what happens is that towards the end of the tour, the thing is that a lot of those points are given over to the GC guys, yeah, yeah. and so Simon Gishka. Yeah. Um, last year lost the polka dot in the last day. Yeah. yeah. So I think a lot of them do hunt. I think you're going to see a lot more breakaways in the mountains yep. coming up because those, we're going to hit some high point stuff. Right. And, and so, uh, yeah, yeah. I, it depends on how the tactics are played with the GC guys. Yeah. Right. They can just say, I don't care. They don't care about those points, but if it gets in the way of them attacking and setting up, you know, yeah, strategy. Go for it. Yeah, then. I recall pretty well, but you know, back in the day when it really made a shift is when Lauren Jalabert, who was a sprinter, a classics rider, a sprinter, um, just one year decided to make these incredibly early, insane attacks and gain massive points. Lauren Jalabert, a sprinter, won the polka dot jersey. Yeah, he changed his style. Yeah, though. yeah. Wow. But, yeah. That's after his crash. And- yeah. But the, so there's also the style of the of the competition came from that yeah. too. Yeah. 
um, in terms of you know just how you can go out early like Nelson Palace is doing mm-hmm. and and try and achieve these early points early points early points but then wow that's odd but then you also <laughs> um, no it's athletic just we brewery. got hot mics all yeah. around the room yeah it is athletic brewing nice one I think that's button number well, I have a co- well you're right because Bye. you think about you know like uh, um Lutro Herrera. I mean, all these like Colombians and yeah. all these climbers that we knew climbers were all in the 80s and even in the 90s. Um, uh, Richard Veronque and those yeah. guys, they they kind of dabbled a close in the top 10, and yeah. but they were really going for the polka dot. Yeah. But I have a question. Yes. Has it always been a polka dot jersey for a climber? Oh, shit. I'm going to say no simply because you're, I asked you're the question. asking me a yeah. trick question. 1976. Was it Stripes? I can't remember what the original was, really? but it, it polka dots came out in 1976. And if I'm, if I remember, it's a candy bar that really? sponsored it. It was polka dot, so and it's stuck. And the candy bar doesn't have anything to do with it. All I know is uh, candy bar or not, but if they wear polka dot shorts, it really pisses me off. Yeah, it's, it's better really than the red ones. Mm-mm. I'll take the red shorts. Nah. I'll take I would the take red reds. Yeah, That's I was on good. a team one. Black. I was on a team orc. once with red shorts, and I'll I'll tell you this. Make sure you shake two or three times after urinating because it is a window to the world. After if you if you if those get just slightly damp, I'm just saying, just saying. Um, nice, nice visual. Thank <laughs> yeah, you. Exactly, exactly. Um, current pack filler league standings. Oh, I don't want to know. I'm ahead of you. I haven't even looked. We're at the bottom. The three of us. Um, of everybody. The only people I am beating are people who signed up but did not pick <laughs> riders. I am that far into shitsville. I am really That's not bad. doing well. Mm-hmm. And did we discuss a punishment? No, we haven't determined that yet. Okay, good. So it doesn't exist. <laughs> uh, I will. I will take. Well, look the, who's leading. It's not over yet. Yeah, he was in town. Brent. Brent. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. in town. And then, uh, yeah, I got a text from him. So he he was going to come back maybe August, September. Is he rubbing it in? No, he Matthew's didn't even mention it once. Wow. I thought I was, I was waiting for the keep for him to like rub it. Mm. Yeah. Um, I will say this, that, that the uh, the highest place non-member of the show, I will send you a pair of Gooders. So I will, I will do that because um, our friends at Gooders have offered to do that. and So, so he doesn't qualify. Brent doesn't because he's been on the show. <laughs> Yeah, there we no, go. You don't get it. <laughs> there we go. Sorry, Brent. Yeah, um, I have to say this is uh, kind of a, a, a variance of the topic, and it's strictly oversight, um, and and it's not very fair. But I haven't caught a single minute of the Giro Dona. I don't know if you guys have the I women's just highlights. Tour really. highlights. Just highlights. Um, yeah. and is it streaming on GCN? Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Uh, and is it bad timing on the calendar? Is it something else? Um, the fact that. How do you, I, it just makes me think like, hey, I've got this really cool movie coming out. I'm going to put it up against a Marvel movie. It just, it's not, yeah. it's, it's not fair. Regard, and I'm not saying anything to do with, with gender, or with, mm-hmm. with women's racing versus men's racing. It's not fair to put something up. It's any, you know, I could pick any type of, of analogy, you know, uh, you know, trying to put the, you know, a, a, a kid's baseball game against the major leagues. It's just, I, I, I'm not saying that one's, I'm, I'm trying to apologize because I don't want people to yell at me, but it's, it's, this is one of the coolest women's races on the calendar, mm-hmm. but you're putting it up against the Super Bowl of cycling. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, oh God, I wish they would have planned them at different times. And I think they, if I remember correctly too, they were, it almost didn't even come come to fruition really this year yeah they were having sponsors uh problems oh shit this won't so, help yeah come but on. and then i think a lot of i think a lot of uh i think some people even dropped out getting ready for for the femme really you know yeah because it's so Avec, close to that yeah Avec Avec Zwift. Zwift. yeah um so um yeah i think it's unfortunate but that they've always been kind of on that part of the calendar um oh. so yeah and, and on a personal level, I have you know I have it on, but I have not really been too in tune to the tour yeah. this year like I have in the past. Really? Yeah. For some reason, I think I've got a lot of on the personal level, you know, on sure. the plate, and then you know, so You're I think that happens. The tour? I am following it, but not like I, I used to like get up 
you can ask my wife like three o'clock in the morning and i just really? be watching the whole thing but now it's it's on in the background and i just kind of look yeah at the tv now and then wow but that's that's but boring. i do once it gets down opposite. to uh the last 20k then i pay attention yeah. but i used to watch the whole bloody thing I'm doing the exact opposite. I'm actually getting up to make sure I'm watching the live feed. I'm getting up at like 6, 6.30 to catch it. And what I'll usually do is I'll rewind just a little bit, and then I'll find it's like, okay, the break's out there, everything's going on, and I'll kind of zap it forward about 10 minutes, and I'll usually catch up to it live at the finish. So I'm I'm ruining your mojo, Paul. Uh, it's, no, it's bizarre world. It is just our world. It's the opposite. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. Because my wife and I always joke about that. We're like, one, one of us decides to work out and the other one quits. <laughs> is it just me or should like the sprint stages be 60 miles? <laughs> <laughs> that kind of defeats the whole purpose of the... Well, you the, know what they does do, it, though? Like, I mean, it would be really fast 60 just crits. miles. Well, so it, it, yeah. when you design that, a lot of people, I think maybe some people understand... But those are basically transfer stages, right? Yeah. So right, they can't right. instead of cramming them on a bus and get them to the next stage. But that's what they're doing. They're trying to get that pan flat, so no one's right. You know, yeah. Uh, so that's what they're trying to, to accomplish. It's just boring. <laughs> final podium in Paris. I've asked you guys this every show. I want to see if it's changed in order. Final podium for top two, three, one, two, three. Uh, Tade, Vendigo, and uh, Henley. Okay. Sticking with what it, where it is. That's now. where I I put it yeah. before. Sam, uh, Tade, Jonas, and I kind of think Pale, Bilbao. Oh, well. Okay, I think he'll make his way up. My heart says Roman Bardet for third. I really wanted Ben O'Connor. Mm. I really yeah, did. He, he made some time up. Yeah, yeah, he did. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna uh, yeah, I'm gonna go. I, I I'm still gonna pick Todd A to win it. Also, um, I think he's just he's just Amazing. barnstorming right now. Unless the team does something brilliant, um, I I wouldn't mind if Jonas won the yeah, whole thing because totally. I think I'd be super Both happy. Both are great guy. winners. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And for all these ex pros, by the way, who are sitting back and making all these comments, there have been a couple who've been you know, why do ex pros not learn to shut the fuck up sometimes? There's one in particular. It's, that yeah, there's the one. Yeah, there, there's uh, Tom Dumoulin said something today too, and it's just like going. I guess it's because people are asking him the question, but yeah. I mean, you, sometimes you just got to keep it a little bit more professional and maybe to not be such a douche. Yeah, yeah man, Andy. He, Yenzi on the. Oh. He, you know what? I I have Lord a hard time with strength. I have a hard time with Yenzi, but I realize how much he actually is enthusiastic hey, about he's it. Very oh, passionate. she yeah. is so passionate. Yeah. He's just such a goofball. Yeah, he is. Yeah, but I want to love you. You're just so I like, weird. I like Phil Jill. Yeah, I think he's I he he's good. great on the back of the bike. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so there we go. Let's jump to tonight's topic brought to us by our friends at Scratch Labs, shall we? Source for clean fuel on your ride, high carb. Mix, hydration mixes, recovery mixes, gels, and great recipe ideas for their famous rice bars. Check out the link at packfiller.com. I want to talk to de- about dealing with a monster. You guys don't even know what I'm t- what the topic is tonight. But, um, I ain't uh, afraid. What? I ain't afraid. You ain't afraid? Bring it. Uh, shopping for cycling and not going online. Um, there's, I've, I've, you know, obviously been doing some research and things like that these days. And there was, I was, I was just realizing that. You know, and I, I we might have touched base on this for a while, a couple shows, but I just love getting a perspective on it in terms of where this industry is going. Um, let's say each of us are looking for a new bike. All right, no budget. I mean, no budget restrictions. Where would you start if you had to look for a bike? If you were interested in trying to shop for a bike, would you immediately hop in the car and go to the LBS, or would you sit down, grab your phone, and start looking at brands and bells and whistles? Am I me? You're you. You are you. 100% you. <laughs> and I have an infinite amount of money. Yeah. Yeah, you're there. Yeah. You're real. <laughs> well, I didn't know this was like a new person getting a bike. Nope, or this is you. Okay, so... If I can just throw money away, then I know what bike I'm going to get. You do. You know, I mean, like, yeah, I, yeah, probably. I mean, I'm going to get a Cervelo or I'm yeah. going to get a Specialized or I'm going to get like some top tier, you know, race bike like that. Yeah. And I'll go to the bike shop and just say this. Okay. Exactly. So you, I'm not going to do, like, I know what I want. 
Like really? I would go through the bike shop because I'd want them to get the money. Okay. You know, very pro like support local bike shop, but I'm not going to at all be talking to them about what I want. Yeah. You know, and what they think I should get. You say this model, this, this make, model, how long does it big. take to get here? Yep. I would order all the parts and I'm like, just give it to me in the box. Don't yeah. touch it. Really? Oh, don't touch my bike. I'm going to tear it down anyway. I'll save you the trouble. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got mine and the stem was upside down. It was pointing up. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I remember not. that. And I was like, I could hear the bike screaming from across the room. Help me. It was Brundlefly. It was, it was not happy, man. I was like, going, okay, thanks. Can I take it home now? Well, we should fit you up to it. I'm like, no, I'm good. No, I can please fit don't myself up to this. it. I got to go save this bike. You're choking it. Yeah. <laughs> You're choking it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let yeah. it live. Yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm upside down. <laughs> Like I've I've done Upward that before because I've bought a few bikes you know in the last couple of years and it's always like don't just just give will, it to me I will buy this from you but I don't want you to touch it yeah you're you're but all, I'm like I'm super particular about all my stuff it has nothing to do with slamming like if you're no 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 yeah, yeah. if you're you know don't know uh, like much about bikes a hundred percent have them build your bike yeah like I just. I'm going to tear it down to the bearings anyway. But you, to, to go back to the initial concept, you were you already know enough about it from industry and online research. Mm-hmm. You know what you want. Yeah. And I mean, so you're going to go straight to the dealer instead of try and find the best magical deal online. No, because I have infinite money. Okay. Oh, because you have infinite money. Let's say you didn't. Anyway, Paul. Pretty much the same. I know being in the bike industry, you've seen it all. Um, I know what what size bike shorter top tubes work better for me yeah um you know it's all these different reaches and stuff i already know the numbers and then it boils down to what manufacturer do i i prefer based on my experiences with different companies too that are reliable you know mm-hmm. through the years that i've seen so and i'm i'm like uh sam i bought a cervello from a local shop here um Great shop too, Fitness Fanatics, mm-hmm. and and yeah, yeah. this is back in oh nine oh eight or oh nine, and I said I I'll build it up, and they said no for for warranty purposes we have to put it together because if you screw it up, you know, really then, yeah. yeah. So and I understood that that's fine, yeah, but what did I do when I got home? I just stripped it all the way down and brought it back up. Yeah, shortened the cables. You know they had these big huge loops and stuff, but um, which is fine, and and uh, until. My old boss uh, got BMC, and that's how I got a, came across it, and I ordered it through him. And uh, he just said, well, I'm not going to bother you. He just gave me it in a box yeah, because he knew what I was going to do. So, mm-hmm. And that's how I, no one touches my bike. If they do, then I take it down and yeah. rebuild it again. So, um, I am at uh, – it's, it's interesting. I'm kind of in at an in-between ground of you guys. Um, I would probably spend a good amount of time – Especially when it comes to to researching a bike, I'm going to look more into um, measurements, into into the actual length. You know, especially like you said, top mm-hmm. tube length. I'm going to look into those types of things. Um, other than that, I'm I'm not going to lie. I mean, it seems like a lot of a lot of companies you almost want to just look into service, not service issues, but warranty issues because. Carbon fiber, there, carbon fiber is at the point now where there are so many quality manufacturers, and let's be honest, a lot of them are probably getting the same bikes from the same manufacturers, mm-hmm. and they're just paint, making it a nice different color. Um, and so, I would probably spend a little time online first, and then, um, you know, it, I, I think Canyon changed the game uh, in, in a good amount of deal with this direct to consumer concept, and it, it, it made a lot of people think that they don't need the bike shop anymore and that that's a scary thing how do you guys get past the fact that there are online deals that are better than local shops i mean do you do you just suck it up and even now let's think realistically on our own budgets and our own personal finances how do you how do you justify walking into a shop yes we know the people who own the shop and we want to stay loyal to shops and we preach that on this podcast but it's also hard sometimes when you're looking like a three, four, five hundred dollar difference. Yeah, I mean, I can very strongly answer this with I will very likely, unless I get some crazy deal, buy whatever I need online because I don't need their knowledge and expertise, right? Okay. Like, because I'm choosing that on my own. Whereas, like, if you're going to go into a shop, 
you're paying more because with that price tag, you're getting all of their knowledge and guidance, right? And that is worth its weight in yeah. gold. Yeah. But for me, it's like, well, if I buy a bike, and you know, and it's twenty percent more or whatever than a, like a Canyon or a you know something that I could find online, it's like for me, I'm going to be doing my own maintenance. I'm going to be doing all my other. Why would I pay the extra money for the name? that's stamped on the side of these carbon fiber bikes, right? Yeah. Like, it just depends. For me, that's what I've wound up at is like, I always tell everybody, go local bike shop because they have your knowledge and that's what you're paying for. And it is worth that. But for me personally, yeah, I'm gonna buy my stuff, you know, at the cheaper cost because I'm doing my own research and I'm doing my own maintenance. Yeah. Paul? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I would still go local bike shop only because I've worked in the, the business for a while. Yeah. I'd like to see those guys. And, and again, by the time I'm going to purchase a bike. I know which one it is, and I'm going to that bike shop, and I'm not going to say, "Hey, I can get this cheaper." And, yeah. and I'm still the guy who will buy a frame. I still have the parts. You know what I mean? Or like you said, part it out. I probably would say, "Hey, I know the bike comes with this, but I I do not like stock bikes now. I do not like the way they're they're set up with really? gear wise. Yeah. yeah, and there's so much stems are too short. By the time you you look at it, I was you know, raised in, in custom, you go spend top dollar back then, you got exactly what you needed. You didn't yeah. have like sacrifice. So Or you didn't have a half a bike in a box next to you. Yeah. You know, from swapping out so many parts. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, everybody has their preference, you know. Um so saddles, throw them out, you know, I've got my preference. Bar width, I've got my preference. They're not everything's narrow now. Yeah. You know, yeah, I could probably go that way and learn that way, but I'm old. Well, I changed. So, yeah, yeah. I like the way I In am. the old days. Yeah, dang it. Uh, now, how do you guys, let's say you were you were planning on buying a new bike brand. How do you deal with the fact that shops usually aren't going to have <clears throat> that high end of that bike on hand for you to go out and to give it a to give it a test ride? You know, I don't need a test don't ride. Need a test you don't ride. need a test nope. ride. Nope. You completely put trust in the top two, every, all the measurements of the bike, and you just like, yep. oh, I'm good. I'm Even if it's a fitter. brand you haven't rid. yep. ridden. Even if it's a brand you haven't ridden. Yep. I'm a bike fitter. Really? I can make it work. For example, my, my bike, when I got it the first time, I had yep. never ridden an integrated seat post like that. And it was the a giant. I would have never yeah. bought it yeah, because yeah. of that. Really? Mm -hmm. I love it now. But when I first got it's on, it was like, stiff. holy shit. Yeah, yeah it scared it's me. At first. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, it is it is a, yeah, it's a it's a bone shaker. Mm -hmm. But but I love it now. Right. But I never got a chance to pre-ride that. I just ordered it. It showed up. And I went, whoa. You know, I can never sell the thing. Again. Yeah, you and I are very similar in that. Like, I, it's because we've been in the business. Yeah, you, know, you just trust. You just trust. Well, yeah, and it's just that I know what I want. Like, I wouldn't buy that integrated, you know, either because, like, oh shit, you break that, you, you need a new frame. You yeah, know, well. it's like, like you have to cut part of the frame off to lower the seat lower. It's yeah. like, huh? Yeah, yeah. Doesn't you know? make sense. It doesn't make sense to me. So it's like for me, I'd order something that's simple. It's like I don't even know what I'm going to get for my next road bike, yeah. but. I'm going to do a ton of research on it before. Okay. Because I'm going to have to go integrated stuff. Yeah. Um, so you just trust the bike brands in the idea that they're going to be a good ride. You just go all, with it. All five, $3,000 and above carbon fiber bikes are incredible. You're So, yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. Then you look at the angles. Like the, this manufacturer you popped up. Yeah. The first thing I did is went to the measurements. I didn't do anything else because that's going to determine your ride. Yeah, the carbon layup. You, you can do your research on how what they're going to focus on. Um, and it's like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, some people just like I got to have it stiff bike. Well, th I like stiff bikes, but to be honest with you, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna laterally move anything nowadays. So compliance <laughs> is really really important, and, and so that's why I'm leaning. And I know what bike what manufacturers have that or yeah, or, and so I think knowledge is. Is, is very important do bike brands in your opinion have a responsibility in restricting online sales mm -hmm. to save to help local bike shops and I, area bike shops stay alive so i was at the tail end of this you weren't even 
you know, God, you were dusty in a corner by the time. <laughs> Holy this crap! Was. You're harsh with the old jokes. Tonight. I know it feels right. I don't know. <laughs> it feels. It just feels doesn't good. hurt. It feels good. It doesn't yeah. hurt. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have skin anymore. It's a shroud. <laughs> Nothing to bounce off. Yeah. Of. <laughs> so, um, I will say that I think that every bike business, if you are okay selling a bike to a bike shop for let's just say three thousand dollars for a six thousand dollar bike let's think math easy then if i'm in spokane and i buy your bike online that should be always every bike company shipped to whatever your local dealer is and you know and there have been several who have done that should get there have been several that have done that but there are a lot that don't yeah and and yeah, and even in the dusty days, you know, when the dinosaurs and we just invented bikes yeah. and we yeah. did that, yeah. manufacturers have rode a stegosaurus. You had to, if you're going to put a bike on sale, you had to get clearance from that manufacturer because, especially if there's another one in town, yeah, if you're a, a, a competitor bike shop that's selling the same yeah. brand, you just don't get to do that totally. Um, and there's some people that do now that you you can always you know under the table you can't advertise it, but it's like hey, listen. I can yeah. give you a deal if you do blah blah blah, or you yep. throw in like I'll change out your saddle, I'll do this for free, right? You know, yeah. uh, so there's ways around to sweetening the deal. But uh, it, getting back to Canyon, I don't, I, I, I don't know if I could pull that trigger as, as good as I think those bikes are. That's really? just there's something about it. Maybe because I'm from a bike shop, I just don't think it's right. I. I am thoroughly impressed with the quality that I see in Canyon, but there are several flaws in which the fully integrated, if you, if anyone at this table were to buy a bike, like it's going to come with an integrated, uh, bar stem oh at the, God. what we're going to get, the level yeah. that we're going to get. And the number of those that I've had to swap out as a fitter is astronomical. And then on top of that, it is an inch and a quarter steer tube. And that stem is a weird stem. So it's a proprietary stem that you'd have to get, even if you want to go like... For Canyon. For Canyon. Mm-hmm. But you can buy an inch and a quarter stem through like FSA and stuff like that, but they don't make it in all sizes. And we're dealing with that with Jackson right now. I yes. mean, one, one crash in a crit, and yeah. it's a freaking nightmare. The bike's nightmare. been down yep. for a month, over a yeah. month. Yeah. yeah, two months almost. Yeah. And it's it, it's it's such a headache. I, but, I I know it looks clean, and I know it's beautiful, and I know it's uh, there are no cables to be seen. But holy shit, it's not doing good when it's hanging on the wall of your dentist's office. Yeah. So well, and that's that's the thing. That's the frustration of the industry for me. It's because it's about the sell. Mm-hmm. And so that's the and chase of the, the speed. And the and the cool. And, and yeah, not making mechanical and going, oh, we got a 12-speed this year. Well, everything is, well, screw that. Yeah. You know. And even when I bought my BMC, um, and that was in 2012, they... BMC uh, spec'd it out with 10, uh, uh, SRAM Red 10. Yeah. And they came out like uh, March of that year with their 11 speeds that you could buy. And I almost didn't get my BMC because BMC was going to ship all SRAM stuff. They were so pissed because their, their bikes are dated. Yeah. Why would anybody buy a, a 10 speed, mm-hmm. you know, when you can get 11 speed? Yeah. And that's the way the industry plays. It's just one up the next guy. And it, and it's people who want to race, yeah. like Jackson and me and you guys. It's like, what a hassle just because they're trying to one-up each other and then price their bikes at $15,000. Yeah. Who's had you used who to be you, able to geez. just like interchange so many different things. Exactly. And you just can't do it anymore. And, and that is, like I was talking to Paul at the wedding, like... God, I, I we were really talking do about feel bikes like at the wedding. Yeah. What? I really do feel like there's a market out there for making something simpler, right? Like yeah. it's just like apple's whole model um yeah. is just like making a bike that you can have a basic carbon frame you can upgrade the wheels you can upgrade the handlebars you can upgrade the crank like you can do all these individual pieces as i did when i was starting out heck i just did i just bought new fsa bars yeah you know so let's go to the bike shop what do they need to do? We, we're seeing bike shops having to reinvent how they do their business. I mean, and it's above and beyond. It's not just open to close anymore. They're almost creating many communities along the line. Group rides, social media accounts, heck, even podcasts. I mean, cool. there are there are some cycling shops who have podcasts. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're, they're, they're having to 
do all this above and beyond. Um, first of all, is that is that now the expectation? Can you not just open a shop, turn on the lights, hang an open sign, and do quality service and repairs? God, you should be able to. I mm-hmm. think about a like local shop that has to deal with this local writer, and I'm leaving both of them anonymous because this like the shit that the this local shop has to put up with. Is he a dentist? <laughs> no, he's not, but he's in the same category. He's a lawyer. Yeah, I'm not going to okay. say whether okay. he's. Uh, it's it's one of those. It's, it's one of those advanced degree jobs where be. they think the world owes them everything. Yep. Right. Yep. yep. And so, so they did pay fifteen thousand dollars for the bike. <laughs> right. I know. <laughs> And so it's it's just one of those things where it's like, man, I feel bad for the bike shops with how are they hard training they have for an work. Ironman? <laughs> 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 how, Sorry, continue. how much they have to put up with, you know, for like a simple like bike shops don't make that much money, and that's what people just have this misconception of is that like a bike shop, you know, there's a eight thousand dollar bike. Oh my god, they must be making at least four grand on this. I'm like mm, no. You know, yeah. No. Yeah. We'd like, like it to make two out two. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Exactly. And so it's just one of those things like and they have to buy the inventory and all this other stuff. So I have to pay know, their like, workers, have to keep the lights on, have yes. to pay the the internet bill, have to do all this kind of shit. And the so, service, the free service yeah, that those yeah. given afterwards and, right. and, and that's just hours like, spent on those yeah. person. It's one of those pieces where personally, you know, man the bike shop has to work so hard these days to, you know, be able to even stay alive. Yeah. Um, it's, it's one of those things. I think they have it way harder than it needs to be. Well, I think their, their model has to change. I think with, uh, propriety type of equipment, not knowing like, like, uh, how to change out a stem. I mean, it'd be pretty easy for somebody, some with mechanical ability, especially with, you know, the way the stems are now, you just, there's four bolts on on the handlebars, and then you take off yeah. the two on the back, and yeah. just a headset, which is very easy nowadays. Not like back in our days when we know, had two stuff. wrenches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, I think that and disc brakes too is things are and, and electronic shifting add a lot, a lot to the average Joe. Mm-hmm. So the bike shop can capitalize on that repair. Mm-hmm. Um, that's how they're going to survive. You cannot. I don't know how anybody can inventory even like second tier road bikes or even mountain bikes, upper end mountain bikes. How do you inventory that much that money stuff? on the floor? Yeah. has got to be insane. You are rolling some dice because it's just bloody expensive. Yeah. And, and who knows if that's what it's going to take. Yeah. You might roll out a ton of them, but God, if I was a bike shop owner, I would be sticking at that like six hundred to eight hundred dollar price range yeah. for like and if almost all. Of somebody my wants yeah. a fifteen thousand dollar bike and they walk in and you've got one on the floor, they're gonna go, "That's great," but the website has it in four more colors. Yeah, I yeah. want I want the blue one. Yeah. Also, there's dust on that. Yeah. So, how about like two thousand dollars off? Yeah. 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 Oh my God. Oh my God. And so uh, you know, blue. so cyclists are the worst. They are. God. Well, I can think of a group that's worse. Us? Well, triathletes are pretty bad. Oh, yeah, no, triathletes. Mountain bike downhillers are pretty bad. Yeah, totally. I'm sure they just... Yeah, like, bro. I think, I think people roadie. in general are people pretty People actually pretty people <laughs> suck. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, uh. let's... You know, how do you... How do you save the mom and pop shop? The the local bike shop? Are the, Is it now to the point where it is this all-encompassing... Um, entertainment center, you know, and and maybe how do you keep getting, and how do you deal with somebody who says, "Hey, man, I really like that fifteen thousand dollar bike. It's really great. I love it. I got it. You know, I I like the feel of it, the fit of it." And then next week they show up at your shop wanting you to repair the canyon they just bought. Do you just swallow your pride yep. and say, and "Okay, I'll fix it." Your yeah. money's in or repair. You look them in the eye with yep. both fingers in their face and go. Fuck you, <laughs> man! I just say, well, you know, normally people that buy the bikes from here will get this deal, but guess who's paying full price? Yeah, you know, like if if, and that's why, like, I never own my own bike shop. But for me personally, like, you can't fight the fact that Canyon does exist and all these others, right? Like, you're sure. just gonna drive that business away. Instead, be like, I would love to fix your bike. Yeah, you know, like this is what needs to happen to it. You know, it's gonna cost you two hundred fifty bucks. Yeah, or more, whatever it is, right? But it, I'm not cutting them brakes if it's not a bike that came from my shop. And that's just doesn't matter if it was an online brand or if it was something else. Yeah. So the bike shop that I worked at, there was a couple of 
he had one exclusive uh, a custom is Davidson out of Seattle. Yeah, yeah. Elliott Bay Cycles. And, um, we're the only ones in Spokane that had them. And he used to sell 35, 45 a year on custom, custom bikes. There's one in the other room. Mm-hmm. I bought a bike from that shop you used to work for. Yeah. Custom and, Davidson. And the thing is, is the other ones, like, you know, I'm going to drop them. Specialized was hard for us because somebody, you, you could sell this person all you want, and then somebody gets a deal. They knew the rep or somebody over Seattle. They got yeah. three hundred dollars, and then when they have it, it's not running well. And so, what do they do? They come, they came to our bike shop to fix, you know. And it's like, are you kidding me? But yeah. then again, the joke's on them because we're the ones that are going to fix it, and we're going to get the money. We had to look at it that way. Yeah, we had a specialized, and we're still sitting on that inventory. But you can't burn that bridge. You want that person to come back mm-hmm. because you've earned that trust and repair. Mm-hmm. And that's where bike shops have to be. They have, unfortunately, just so your bread and butter is going to be through repairs mm-hmm. and the seven eight hundred dollar maximum price bikes. Is what you're saying? Yeah, I mm-hmm. don't. I don't unless even they're like going to REI or because they're going you don't. To, the margins are I mean, still would, low. Yeah, you have to I sell would, thousands of those to yeah. really make any money. I yeah. would be a closet shop that does like boutique stuff, right? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. if if I were to ever be in the industry, like I would be doing. Just like, hey, what do you want? And then I would build it. And you're going to make your margins are are not much on that. But it's a passion thing. And, you know, it's another piece where, like, you're not having the risk. Risk to reward for me. I'd way rather have low risk, low reward than, you know, like stocking stuff and making a little bit more. Yeah. Speaking of which, when was the last time you walked into a bike shop and bought a helmet, clothing, a computer, components, anything like that? Two weeks ago. You did? Yeah. Like what? I bought my wife a specialized helmet. I bought myself a helmet, myself shoes. That was like probably two months ago. And then, yeah, I bought a couple other things recently. Wow. I've had a lot of stuff from the local shop. But once again, it's the thing of like, this is what I need. Yeah. So you know exactly what you're going. Oh, and yeah. oh, so you had to order in advance. It I, wasn't they, sitting yeah, in, and in it's and, and I don't expect for it to be. Yeah. yeah. That's the hard part. You know, mm-hmm. is you go into the bike shop and you're almost just adding one more step in the process as totally. opposed to grabbing your phone and going. Absolutely. But like, once again, it. like I want that bike, that bike shop like puts on events locally. Absolutely. Right? They sponsor different events. They, they are there for being mechanics. They've even, you know, saved me two times that yeah. I can think of. So it's like one of those things where, man, I'm a, yeah, I will always give them my money. Yeah, and I think I think of the times that I would go out to you know these shops that host rides, starting from their location, where you go out there and you're hanging out before the ride starts, and you keep looking at that bike hanging on the wall, and eventually you're just gonna say, "Hey, can you order me one of those?" That's how I got mm-hmm. my bomb track from Mojo. Mm-hmm. I bought it because we were getting Jackson's bike dialed in, and they were like, "Pat, have you seen this?" And I'm like, "Holy shit!" And so I sold I'll the take car. That. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I sold a car and bought yeah. a bike. You know, yeah. Yeah. that's but, a good deal. But, you know, that's the social dynamic of it is mm-hmm. such an important part of it. You know, so I don't know. Um, I guess I guess that's it. Speaking of services you can't find anywhere else, let's take a moment and check in with Sam for quick tips with Bike Fit. Sam brought to us by AmbassadorCycling dot com. Get over there. Get fit to get fit. You guys, it's very important. And I was talking to somebody today about the uh, the insane importance of having a proper fit. And we've been talking about it a lot, but I'm getting it from industry people now. So yeah, there you no, go. Uh, Congratulations, job security. <laughs> Thank you. I uh, yeah, it's been fun. It's been fun to see this thing grow too. Um, yeah. But I had somebody come in and saying like, yeah, I heard about you on Reddit, and I'm like, what is Reddit? <laughs> they read it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, my fit tip would be, and I kind of covered on this. I actually did a fit this earlier this week on a on a bike that um, it was a refit, and I did an original fit on this guy like let's say a month ago ish, still having some issues, and comes back and we make a few small tweaks, but then it's like actually you need to do a lot of stretching. Like this guy was, you know, just so tight that he couldn't go down. Cause like if you stopped him stationary on the different positions, it all looks great. Right. But then you get him moving dynamically and it's like, what is happening here? Worse than me. You're pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> just my yeah. shoulders. You just your shoulders. Yeah. You're just glued like this. I am. I'm like Larry King. Yeah, it's exactly. like someday you expect the suspenders <laughs> to just pull both shoulders together in the front. Just like, slap. 
<laughs> but I will say, like, if, if people want a simple, like, hip stretching routine, we can make a video on that. You know, like, let me know what it is that you guys want. If you want, you know, a simple, like, what I do when I get off the bike, when I get home, what I gave this guy, I can give you guys some simple, like, hip flexor, hamstring, all those Holy simple, shit. you know, like, three, four stretches and you're gold. Should take 10 minutes. Wow. We can put together a little video. I know what guy Do one of my little hep sheets, home exercise programs. Wow. Okay. Wow. Hmm. I, yeah, so that like opens up fit, a whole but, thing. I mean, like, that's we how should... bike fit, like we talk about all these other things, right? Like yeah. when people come in for bike fit, they think that I just do this little piece. And a lot of it is I take the PT background. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have a lot of experience in nutrition, coaching, all that. So, yeah. yeah. Should we shoot this after we do the beer mile? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Drunk in a Borat swimsuit. Yes. Yes. When, you're doing, when you're doing hip, <laughs> yes. hip stretches, yep. just with the camera straight yep. on the One front. One of them, you're bent over. Right hey, old man, you're falling out. Yeah. First, we Tuck take, that baby in. We take the left leg. It looks like a turkey gobbler. S- Put it back in there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good <laughs> <guys>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before we finish the show, we're going to end up with our final question, the final K. What is the best cycling advice for a married, brand new married man you could give? Hi, Jackson. We're going to give Jackson cycling while married advice. Just a quick thing. Let's say you're holding the microphone at the wedding, but it has to be cycling specific advice that you have to give a brand new newlywed. What would it be? I don't care whoever goes first. <laughs> I would say that, you know, bike rides with the wife are the best bike rides ever. That's a good one. Always. Uh, I like, I went good. for a Unless ride. You don't Paul's know wife. my wife. <laughs> yeah. No, sure. Hey, you can find a style of bike riding that's that nice. Nope. Yeah, well, well she, what we do, she's, she's, she's got a cruiser around she's town. Cruiser. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Cruiser, like, you yeah. know, it's we don't whatever go long Kenzie distance. wants to do. If Kenzie wants to ride, we're going to go do that. Yeah. We, we just go best. down the block to a brewery mm-hmm. or a winery. Yeah. And that's yeah. it. And that's the best type of riding. Yeah. 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 I would say. That's good. Yeah, once you get married, your priority becomes the relationship. Being that I had a practice wife, yep. I found this out. Yeah, I I found out, and I even kind of fell back a few times, even in my current wife situation. Really? Yeah, where it's just like you get so focused, and and I made a statement. Too. Is that why my basement is full of wheels? Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. That's not it. <laughs> um, no, it's just priorities when you know, like time taken it away, and and I'm at I'm. As we know, very elderly, and uh, so it, it's important to put things in perspective. I'm not going to go win tons of races. I'm not. I don't have any. I, I want to race, and I have to be selective. I can't go out and race every weekend. Yeah, when you yeah. brought up if there was a if a two hour drive away, would you race every weekend? I had to balk a little bit because that wouldn't be realistic. Right, being married. I'm, you and can't that's where do I'm that. at. Yeah, I mean, there's no way that I'm. And it has nothing to do with. We've all talked about this. It has yeah. nothing to do with the fact that it's like you know I'm going to be guilt tripped or anything like that. It's like simply, I wouldn't want her to be gone every weekend. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, I'd be like, mm-hmm. like those weekends, I'm like, oh, cool. What do I do? Yeah, it goes both ways, right? Yeah. And so it's one of those things that like there's a, a mutual respect for it, and yeah, that's why I'm saying like you know the, the times in which I will ditch and be like. Uh, sorry, guys, not available for a ride. It's because I'm going out for a ride with her. Yeah, ten out of ten best rides. And and the thing is, is your wife will let you know if yep. you're crossing that line. Yeah, yeah. Stop. Yeah. And you know <laughs> what? Going. She's right. Yeah. Like the yeah, reality is, like, she's right yeah. because yeah. like if it's you trust somebody enough that you're going to marry them, you should trust them to be like, hey, reel it in, reel yeah. it in. Yeah, yeah. reel yeah. it in. Yeah. yeah. You know, and yeah, it's the disappearing, you know, on important times and stuff like that. For mm-hmm. example, my wife went um, to North Idaho and tomorrow's my birthday. Huh. Are you alone? Right now. Yeah. No tomorrow? Bender? Did she take Bender? She took Bender. She took my dog. When, you, when is she yeah, back? She left. She's coming tomorrow. Oh, She's coming. Get out of here. God, no. get out of here. <laughs> I had to Whoa, ride is Pat. Whoa, alone. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I might just, you know, I, I probably would have kicked back, gone for a bike ride, watched movies, mm-hmm. stuff like that, you know. Had a day. Hand down your pants. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Another pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Domino's. Yeah, yeah. 
No, my, you know my address. My my advice for a married guy is, is simple. Always add at least uh, ten to fifteen percent to the ride time that you think mm-hmm. you're going to be going. Mm-hmm. Just because you never know. You know, I think there's a a short video out there of when she says, "You said you're going to be gone for an hour." Yeah, but I had to ride to the coffee shop. I had to wait for the guys. I had to have coffee. <laughs> then he I did the it. hour ride. I got yeah. There was a flat in the middle, okay. and then we stopped for coffee or a beer afterwards. So yeah, I was only riding for an hour. It was three. <laughs> yeah, it was three. Yeah. Yeah. That's that first one, and and then the second one, um, uh, and this is coming from somebody who has a severe problem with it. Make sure they're tolerant of all the shit that you own from mm-hmm. from being a cyclist. Mm-hmm. I have I have too much, and my wife is very patient. Fortunately, we have a full basement in our house, and she doesn't come down here unless to do laundry. I have bought new bars. I have bought a new computer. I have bought a new helmet. All in the last like. How much? And she just kind of like, I love you. Yeah. I love you too. Yeah. I love you so much. You're so perfect. Thank you for just. Yeah. Wait you until you buy one more thing and yeah, then it's like then it's, yeah. crickets. Yeah. yeah. You're in trouble. Oh, I'm on that line. I'm not <laughs> buying another thing. It's, I already got the like. But I'm okay. going to do. But I'm going to do a time trial, <laughs> so I need the time trial bike, honey. Yeah, yeah, no, that yeah, shit ain't going to work by the line Yeah, there, there we but... go. Hey, everybody, like, subscribe, rate us on iTunes, join our YouTube channel, and be sure to check pathfailer.com as we are planning and building. I've got so many Build the Empire ideas that are rattling around in my brain that hopefully I'm just going to put into into action here very shortly, and, and I'd love to have everybody along for the ride. So... Sam and Paul, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks, thank thanks, you. Dad. That yeah. was a great time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jackson is on his honeymoon, and um, David, wh- where on is vacation, he at? So. He is in San Diego, which That's stands right. for That's a whale's why. vagina. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. He, yeah. He's 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 staring no, at the beach. Doesn't. No, yeah, I don't think it does. <laughs> well, agree to disagree. <laughs> yeah, uh, they'll both be back next week, though. They right? will both be back next week. So yeah, nice. we can we can call Jackson Mister and watch him play around with his finger mm-hmm. that that, yeah, that yeah. wedding ring that wedding ring shuffle that like, mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. I don't know what to do with this thing in my hand and then we can watch David talk too quietly well he's been pretty good lately he has been good we yeah. he uh, somebody started busting his balls so he didn't take our advice now if we could just get Sam to put his headphones down without causing a major <laughs> eruption of some sort yeah exactly <laughs> I'll get a beer <laughs> thanks you guys thanks 